Hi, and welcome to Horror Recap. Today, we're going to explore 2012's Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Beware, spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. We open up in Washington, D.C., and we watch as construction on buildings takes us back to 1865. Abraham Lincoln sits at his desk, writing in his journal, and he gets ready to head to the theater. He leaves his journal, which recounts his life to his friend Henry, who begins to read it immediately. Now, we go back to 1818, when Abe was just a boy. He watches as slaves are taken away, and his friend, Will, is watching his parents get taken away. Abe wants to help, but his father keeps him from getting involved. Abe doesn't stand by, though. He grabs an axe and attacks the slave drivers. He ends up getting whipped alongside his friend but his father shows up and punches the slave driver into the river. The boss, Jack, comes out, and he confronts Abe's father about standing up to his men. He fires him and tells him that he'll be collecting his debt one way or another. That night, Abe lies in his bed above his parents, and he watches as Jack slips in and poisons his mother. Over time, her condition gets worse, but when Abe lies down with her to read, she passes away. Abe and his father bury her in the winter snow, and his father makes him promise not to do anything foolish. After some years, the father dies, and Abe decides he's going to make sure to right some wrongs. He finds himself in a bar, and he drinks himself silly enough to go after Jack. He sits in a canoe under the dock, and he watches as Jack talks to his boss, Adam. When Adam leaves, Abe sneaks onto the dock and pulls a gun on Jack. The gun doesn't fire and he runs away from Jack. While he reloads the pistol, Jack taunts him about his dead mother, but Abe reloads just in time to shoot the bullet right into his eye. After looking at Jack's body, Abe tosses the gun into the water, only to find that Jack's body is gone. Suddenly, he pops up in front of him and shows his true vampire form. While he beats up Abe, Henry shows up in the nick of time and throws Jack off of him. Abe ends up waking up the next morning in a bed, and he stumbles around until he hears a girl screaming out. After he finds that it is just Henry with a woman in the tub, he waits until he's done to ask questions. Henry gives him the quick rundown about how he's a vampire hunter, and he tells Abe that he now owes him for saving his life. Abe begs him to teach him how to hunt vampires, but Henry has him promise not to only seek vengeance. After agreeing to that, Henry shows him the armory, where Abe goes with a classic wood chopping axe. Now that he has his weapon of choice, Henry takes him to the woods to train his skills. After finding his power, Abe strikes down a tree in a single blow, and Henry brings him back inside to train in night combat. It doesn't go well at first, but Abe doesn't give up. With persistence and dedication, Abe studies everything about vampires, and Henry takes him out to take down some targets. Abe only has eyes for Jack, but Henry shows him Vidoma and Adam. In 1837, Henry sends Abe out into the world to live the lonely life of a vampire hunter, and he meets a general store owner in Springfield named Joshua. Joshua agrees to let Abe stay in an apartment upstairs so long as he helps out around the shop. Then one day, Mary Todd shows up in the shop, and Abe gets a letter from Henry at the same time. After closing the shop that night, Abe immediately grabs his equipment and heads over to the local pharmacy to tackle his first target. It doesn't go as planned at first, and he winds up stepping right into a trap. In a few quick moves, Abe manages to kill the vampire and bury it in the middle of the woods. In the morning, Abe doctors up his wounds in the shop, and Joshua tells him that they got invited to a ball. That night, the two of them head inside, and Joshua tries to get Abe to talk to Mary Todd. Sure enough, she comes over to invite him to dance, and they get to know each other a little better. They surprise each other with their back and forth conversation, but when Abe goes back to the shop, he finds that Henry has many more targets for him. Abe continues to destroy vampire after vampire, and he goes out on a picnic with Mary Todd. During their picnic, she notices how tired he is, and he decides to be open and honest with her about hunting vampires. She doesn't take him seriously though, and Abe seems happy about that. That night, Mary tries to kiss him goodnight, 
but Henry's rule of no attachments whispers through his head. What Abe doesn't see as he walks away is that Jack watches Mary go inside her home. The next day, Vidoma shows Adam a headline about a vampire hunter in Springfield, and Adam can't wait to meet him. Back in Springfield, Abe is surprised to find his childhood friend, Will, but Will is in need of a good lawyer. Abe agrees to help him get bounty hunters off his back, who are trying to say he's a runaway slave, but they're ambushed by them in the middle of the street. After Abe shows that he's not to be messed with, the two friends are sent to jail where Mary has to call the senator to have them released. After thinking about how racial injustice is something he can't stand by, Abe decides to start getting into politics to make a difference. Suddenly, Henry shows up, and he tells Abe that he's not there to chase votes. Abe tells him that he still hasn't gotten to take out Jack yet, but Henry shows him that Jack knows about Mary. He wishes him good luck, and Abe heads out to take out Jack. He misses his first attempt, and they end up having a chase on horseback where the two of them seem pretty evenly matched. After they take a tumble down the cliff, Abe shoots another bullet through Jack's good eye. While Jack lies there dying, he tells Abe that there are thousands of vampires that will be looking for him now. But Abe goes ahead and finishes him off. In town, we watch as Henry proves to be just another vampire. Abe discovers this as well, and he comes after Jack. Jack manages to stop him, and he explains why he's a vampire killing other vampires. He lost his wife to an outlaw band of vampires led by Adam and he was actually turned by Adam himself. No matter what Henry tried to do after this, he couldn't actually hurt another vampire. After hearing this story, Abe says his goodbyes. When he gets home, Abe is surprised by Mary, but he really surprises her when he proposes to her in the shop. Of course, she says yes, and they get married in no time at all. At the reception, Abe introduces everyone to Henry, but Henry pulls him aside to give him a warning about getting close to someone. Meanwhile, Adam finds Jack's body in a coffin, and he tells Vidoma to invite Abe to the plantation. So, the vampires take Will, and they send an invitation to Abe. Abe accepts, and he brings Joshua along. On the journey, Abe tells him about what they're about to face, and he even trains him a little bit. When they get to the plantation, Abe gets there just in time to stop the vampires from eating Will, and he manages to kill most of them before Vidoma pins him to the ground. Adam tries to offer Abe an ultimatum to kill Henry in exchange for Will's life, but he ends up not having to choose. Joshua slams through the wall on a carriage, and he snatches the humans who then get away on a boat. By morning, the humans come across a church full of runaway slaves, and this inspires Abe to tackle a bigger problem. When Abe gets back to the city, he takes on the issue of slavery, and he is elected as president. During this time, the Civil War is going strong, and we see Abe sitting in the White House while his son, Willie, plays. It is now that Abe signs the Emancipation Proclamation, and he takes it to Congress where he speaks about taking down the great evil. Elsewhere in the White House, we see that Vodoma has disguised herself as a normal housekeeper, and she walks into Willie's room to befriend him. She also infects him with vampirism, and when Abe sees the mark, he knows exactly what it's from. Soon, Willie lies in his bed in the same fashion that Abe's mother did, and Abe and Mary sit around the bed to comfort him. During this time, Abe spots the pocket watch that is attached to Adam, and he knows who did this. Soon, Mary calls for Abe, and he appears at Willie's bedside. After Willie passes, Henry shows up, and he offers to bring him back as a vampire. It's here that Mary shows up to beg Henry to actually bring him back. Abe tries to explain that Willie wouldn't be their son anymore, but Mary believes that this is Abe's fault. Meanwhile, the war rages on, and Adam devotes his own kind to the Confederate side. As a means to fighting the vampire threat, Abe calls for all of the silver in the Union to be brought in to be melted into ammo. Joshua meets Vodoma to give up Abe, but he turns around and watches Abe pull off his master plan. Later, Abe tells Mary to get out of Washington, and he retrieves his axe from its resting place. Abe gets people on his side ready, and Adam gets his people ready to intercept. While Abe and Joshua ride in the engine of a train, Abe notices something is off with Joshua. 
He swears that things are fine, but soon, Henry shows up in the rail car to warn Abe that Joshua has crossed him. Will fights a horde of vampires, and he even heads up to the roof to take out as many vampires as possible. Eventually, he comes across Adam, and he's not too happy. Adam goes to bite Abe, but Henry shows up and sticks his arm there just in time. As they come up on a burning section of the bridge, Adam confronts Joshua on where the shipment of silver ammo was, but when Joshua admits to playing him, Adam bites him to transform him. Just then, the train flips, and Adam charges towards Abe. Abe is ready though, and he punches his silver pocket watch through Adam's chest. After the humans jump to safety, we see that Henry actually helped save them after all. When Henry asks Abe where the silver ammo really is, he tells him that Mary was crucial to getting all of it to the camp at Gettysburg. Mary, on the other hand, hands out ammo at the camp, but when she comes face to face with Vidoma, she shoots her with no problems. Now that the Union has silver ammo, we cut forward to Abe giving his famous speech, and we cut forward to modern day time. We find that Henry is still alive, and he's watching a man drink himself silly just as Abe did all those years ago. Sure enough, a gun falls out of his coat, and we're left with an open ending. For a movie about one of our greatest presidents being a vampire hunter, it's the definition of entertainment. Amazing effects and superb acting is enough to give this movie a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.